Hey everybody, welcome back to Calibrate Tools and today we're gonna to talk about one of the handiest tools ever. If you're an electrician, you're in the construction industry or you're just a handyman, you gotta know what I'm talking about. Yes, that's right, this right here. This is a wire stripper crimper, okay? If you don't know what all that means, hit that like and subscribe button, stick around, and you're gonna find out right after this. Now, even in this age of wireless devices and wireless systems, you still need wires. Open up that wireless TV you got. Guess what you're gonna find? Wires. Open up that wireless speaker system you got. Guess what you're gonna find? Wires. Wires are everywhere. Let's just say you wanna change a wall socket in your house, or you wanna change a fuse in your car or change the speaker system in your car. Guess what you're gonna be dealing with? Wires. So you gotta know how to connect them right because if you don't connect them right, it can spell big problems. So today we're gonna to talk about this tool right here, the wire stripper crimper, okay? And what it does and why it's so useful and handy. Okay guys, let's uh, explore this tool right here, the stripper crimper tool. And uh, you're gonna see a bunch of numbers on it, but don't get confused. We're gonna go over that right now. So uh, starting from the top here, I got my star key Allen wrench here, as you can see as my pointer, okay? so. Starting from the top, you have these numbers here, right? And they represent the gauge of the wire, or uh, in other words, the thickness of the wire or the diameter of the wire. And uh, it goes from 12 to 10 to 12, 14 to 16, 18 to 22, okay? And they represent the gauge of the wire. So the thicker the wire or the wider the diameter, uh, the lower the number of the gauge. So here, 10 would be the widest on this tool, a 10 gauge wire would be the thickest wire that this tool uh, could handle, okay? And it goes all the way up to 10 to 12 gauge for this slot right here. As you can see, um, this slot is slightly bigger than this slot, the 14 to 16, which is slightly smaller than a 10 to 12 gauge wire, right? And then above that, you have the 18 to 22, which is even smaller than the last two, right? So you have these openings here from very small, too big, okay? So that represents the wire gauge, and this portion of the tool is the crimping portion. That's where you crimp the wire. So we're gonna go over that in a second. Let's just finish uh, talking about these numbers here. Here, this is this portion of the tool is for cutting uh, screw threads and so forth. That's a bonus of the tool that we'll talk about later, and we'll show you how that's done. Then you have uh, the wire cutter section here. That's where you cut the wire. And then you have the wire stripping section, and that's, once again, you have the gauges, okay? From 10, which is the largest, the largest hole, all the way down to the 22 gauge, okay? Which is, uh, I should say, up to the 22 gauge, which is the smallest hole for this tool. Now, you may be wondering what this means, ignition terminals. Okay, now this portion of the tool, this opening right here, uh, you use to crimp ignition terminals, like spark plug terminals for cars, and uh, we're gonna get into what a terminal is in just a sec, okay? But you can use, you can use this to uh, also crimp coaxial cables. Uh, and I'll show you what that is. You probably know already. You've probably seen it a million times and didn't even know what to call it. Okay, guys, this is a coaxial cable right here. And I know you've seen these a million times in your house, you know, coming out of the wall and all that for your cable TV and, and so forth. And the tips of this is, uh, is called the terminal, the coaxial cable terminal. And these can be crimped as well with the, uh, with the tool we just uh, looked at. Okay, guys, this is a coaxial cable with a coaxial terminal on the end, if you didn't know already. Okay, guys, so I know I've been talking about terminals a lot, and you're probably wondering, what is a terminal? Well, you have a wire, and the wire ends at some point. That means it terminates at some point. But that wire has to connect to something, either a device or even another wire. And the way you connect them is through terminals. And that's what these are right here. Okay, so let's talk about them right now. I got four different types of terminals. You have a, uh, on the left here, you got a ring terminal. It looks like a ring, right? Uh, aptly described as a ring, ring terminal. So that's what that is. Then you have, uh, next to that, you got what's called a spade terminal, kind of forked. 
you know, a fork shape there, and that's called a spade terminal. Then you have what's called disconnect terminals. That's right here. And then you have what's called a butt terminal, right? So, so I guess you want to butt another wire up to uh, another wire, you would use these terminals right here. It's called a butt terminal. So there you have it, guys. And once again, like I mentioned, uh, spark plug wires have different types of terminals. And you have coaxial terminals for coaxial, coaxial cables and so forth. So you can do your research on that. But right here, this, uh, this is the four basic types of terminals that come with uh, stripper crimper uh, toolkits. And uh, you can get some specific to what you want. Some have coaxial uh, terminals as well. And I guess for cars, they also have, you know, spark plug cable terminals as well in their kits. So let's get right into how this crimping tool works and a, a stripper wire cutter crimping tool. And uh, let's do it. Okay, now I have a 14 gauge wire here and I also have a 16 gauge wire. Can you guys tell me which one is the 14 gauge and which one is the 16 gauge just by looking at it here? Well, okay, I, I know you guys probably kind of confused, right? But the smart guys will say, okay, which one looks bigger? The bigger one must be the 14 gauge, right? And the smaller one must be the 16 gauge. Well, let's look at them. So you have the uh, wires here and which one looks bigger and which one looks uh, smaller? Thickness wise, diameter wise. Matter of fact, let me see if I can get the end of it here, of each one and which one looks bigger, which one looks smaller? Well, to me, the one on the right looks bigger, right? So that must be the 14 gauge. And this one on the left here must be the 16 gauge, okay? Okay, so we're gonna use the 16 gauge wire here to demonstrate how the stripper crimping tool works, right? So first we want to uh, cut a piece of this wire off because we're not gonna use this whole thing, right? So perfect. We're gonna demonstrate how, the, how you can cut the wire with the tool, so that's pretty straightforward. What you do is you take the wire and you say, okay, I want to uh, use this portion or this much of this wire here, and you put it in the cutter section and simply snip it off. There you go. So now that we have our you know piece of wire that we're gonna use, the next thing we wanna do is strip it, right? And we learned earlier on that this is the stripping section of, of the tool, right? And what is this again? This is a 16 gauge. So where do we strip it on this tool? Right there, right? 16 gauge. Okay, so we insert it here. So here we go. Say we want to strip off eh, I'm out of just about this much right here. Okay, so let's go for it. So we insert it in the 16 gauge section like that. Clamp down and then twist it a little bit. There you go. That's how you strip the wire there, 16 gauge wire, using the 16 gauge slot there, okay? Okay guys, you may be saying, okay, you stripped it too much. The exposed conductor is too long for the uh, terminals you're gonna use, right? So no problem, okay? What you do is you take your wire cutter section again and you can snip it off again, but before you do that, how much do you need? So what you, what you can do is you can take your terminal, let's just say we're gonna use a ring terminal, and you can uh, place it on this conductor, like so, and see how much sticks out, right? That's how much you need to cut off, right? Because the, uh, the ring terminal stops here and you have all this sticking out here, so you just you just cut this, this much off, all right? So what you can do is you can kind of bend it a little bit to know that's where you need to cut it. And then you just go with the crimper, your cutter, and put it in there. There you go. Bam. And what you do is you twist it up again. Take your ring terminal, place it on there, and look. 
not all that excess hanging off, right? So now, what do you want to do now? You want to crimp it, right? You want to crimp this terminal onto the wire. What did we learn before? This is a 16 gauge wire. This is the crimping section of the tool. And where do we go? 16 to 14 gauge. So it would be the middle opening right here, right? So you take your crimper section of the tool and you put it in there and you squeeze. That ain't going anywhere. Nice and crimped. Okay guys, I wanna show you guys something very important here before you start crimping, crimping your lives away, all right? So um, what I did was I took the uh, rubber portion or the insulation off the terminal to expose the bare terminal. So this is one with the insulation and I took it off just for illustration purposes to show you what's underneath that rubber part. So you have a bare terminal here, right? With no insulation covering. And what you see down here, if you look closely, is a line down the middle of the metal here, right? If you hold the uh, ring part, you know, you can see it. You can see the ring part, right? But if you, if you uh, put it at this profile, you won't be able to see that split so this is very important here all right so you have the split down the middle right and if i if i turn it this way you can kind of see the split in the metal there do you see it okay so just know that it's there right so that's very important because when you place your terminal in the crimping tool you want to make sure that that split is touching or facing the side of uh either side of the terminal jaws, right? You don't want that split to be facing this way. You want it to either be touching the side of the jaws of the, uh, the tool, okay? Reason being is that when you squeeze down, for instance, I'll illustrate it here. Can you see the split? Let me see if I can push it out a little bit more. So you see that the split is touching the uh, upper jaw of the tool. So when you squeeze it, you see that the split is touching the upper jaw of the, of the tool, right? So when you squeeze or crimp down on the wire, like so, the split, you know, okay? In theory, that split should uh, provide a greater grip on the wire itself, right? So you want to make sure that that uh, split is e touching either jaw of the, uh, of the tool. Okay, guys, we're finally going to talk about this area right here, this section of the tool right here. And it's the uh, section where you can cut bolts and rethread them, okay? And as you can see, you have the numbers here that represent the different size bolts that are out there. Okay, so let's get right to it. I have with me today some uh, 6 32nd uh, machine screws and we have some 8 32nd uh, machine screws. Okay, so let's see how this works with the tool. Okay, so we have a 6 32nd machine screw on the left and we have a 8 32nd machine screw on the right. So take your pick, we can use either one to uh, illustrate how this section of the tool works. All right, so we're gonna use a 632nd. So let's say for instance that you need to use a machine screw and you don't have the right length screw for your project, right? And all you have is these laying around, right? Well, you can cut these to the size that you need with this right here. So you look for the appropriate size uh, hole on the tool that uh, represents your screw size, right? So this is a 6 32nd. So you look for 6 32nd on the tool. There it is, right there, right? And then you open up the tool to reveal the appropriate hole for the tool, okay? 
Then you insert the screw into its uh, appropriate hole right there. You never want to put the screw in on the underside of the, of the tool. No, you always want to put it in on the front where the numbers are, right? That's how you want to insert it, right? So you insert it in there. So once you insert it in the hole, right, you screw it in, then you just simply squeeze and guess what? Luckily it's letting me take it out. Sometimes you're going to need a screwdriver to take it out. So as you can see, we just cut down this 632nd screw and we re-threaded it as well on the way out. Okay, so we just cut down this 632nd screw. Here is another 632nd screw, and let's put it side by side to see the length difference, okay? As you can see, the one on the right is uh, slightly taller than the one on the left that we just cut, okay? And uh, so what you do is you just cut it to size, you know, with this right here for your project. You can cut uh, screws down to size with this and, uh, they have the different sizes for you to do that, right? And then once you cut it down, you know, you can re-thread it. Once you've cut your screw, you, you can stick it back in there and re-thread it. Right? Because in that hole, there are threads. I don't know if you can see it in here, but trust me, in the hole there, it's th it's threaded. Maybe with this light, you can kind of see that there's threads in there. And that's how you re-thread your cut screw. And that's what this section is for, okay? To cut and re-thread screws. So, hey, if you're out of a particular size screw or length of screw, then, hey, just use this to cut it down to size. Okay, guys, I hope you learned something today about these things. Stripper, crimper, tools. Very handy. You got to get you one, okay? If you're in the construction industry or you're doing handy work, man, they're just good tools to have, okay? So if you like what you saw today, hit that like and subscribe button, and I'll see you guys in the next one.